Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to part two on small bowel tumors. And we left off speaking about carcinoid tumors, making the point that carcinoid tumors are occurring more frequently these days. We also made the point that carcinoid tumors are commonly seen as a mass in the root of the mesentery with desmoplastic reaction, and about 70 plus percent of them calcify. Now you can see other masses in the mesentery that calcify, calcified nodes, sclerosing mesenteritis, treated lymphoma, but when you see desmoplastic reaction, it's invariably going to be carcinoid. You also notice when you look at the MIP imaging, you often see cutoff of vessels. Here you can see amputation of branches and irregular branches of the SMA, the ileal branches, because of the desmoplastic reaction. And you can see this very nicely also in the cinematic where you see the mass. And then as you change the rendering parameters, very nicely show the desmoplastic reaction. Sometimes the mass is a larger. Here's a mass with spiculation, enhancement, faint calcification. The spiculations are better shown on the coronal views. And the desmoplastic reaction and spiculations are particularly well shown on the 3D reconstructions where the irregularities are noted and the desmoplastic reaction, the encasement of both the SMA and branches of the SMV. This is why the patient would not be resectable. You can't resect something encasing the SMA and SMV. And here and again it is with cinematic, really accentuating the desmoplastic reaction, the irregular vessels very nicely shown in this example. Now carcinoid tumors give you vascular liver mets if you don't do arterial phase, you can miss the lesions. They can be much more vascular than they are in this case, but you can see multiple vascular lesions. And here is the patient's tumor, partially calcified, desmoplastic reaction. There you see the SMV encased on the coronal or on the desmoplastic reaction, vessel encasement and calcification nicely seen on the MIP imaging. And here it is again. And then when you take those rendered images and you go to cinematic, the mass and the mesentery and the desmoplastic reaction are particularly well seen. Now one of the challenges we had in the past is finding the lesion in the small bowel. It's also important to remember these lesions can be multiple. So here the diagnosis is easy. I found the mesenteric mass with desmoplastic reaction, but where's the primary? When you look carefully, you can see an enhancing lesion in the patient's uh, colon. And then when you start looking on coronal views, you also can see a lesion or a bilobe lesion in the terminal ileum. So this was multifocal carcinoid tumors. And again, the enhancement of the primary tumor nicely shown and the mass in the mesentery nicely shown as well. But you could see how you need to keep looking. It's not in the same set of images, but it's looking carefully that allows us to make the diagnosis. And again, here very nicely showing you the lesion in the terminal ileum. So again, very nice example. Now the next tumor, and one that can be confused at times with carcinoid, are just tumors. It's the most common mesenchymal neoplasm of the GI tract. can occur, occur anywhere from the esophagus to the rectum. Now the thing about just tumors, we can pick them up when they're small or when they're large. When they're large, they're typically exophytic. They're not very vascular, but they can perforate. Occasionally they calcify, particularly when they're lyomyomas and smaller. These lesions can be vascular and they can even be hypermetabolic on PET. The thing about GIST tumors, most of them are local, but they can spread to liver and bone and omentum. And recurrence is not gonna be uncommon. When you look at the lesions, particularly as they get larger, they're commonly exophytic. So large gist tumors often don't obstruct bowel. And you can see gist tumors exophytic. Think about the stomach, think about small bowel, think about rectum. Duodenum is the most common small bowel location and can present with GI bleeding, particularly when the lesions are relatively small. Age is like adenocea 50 to 60. GI bleeding, anemia, abdominal pain, weight loss are common presentations. We talk about obstruction being rare, and that's because the tumor is usually growing exophytically. We talk about enhancement patterns. We talk about clinical presentations, and what articles like this one by Scola makes the point how variable things are. Just picking bleeding, bleeding can be slow 
or it can be massive. It can be due to rupture. The thing unique about just tumors is that they express alpha active kit receptor tyrosine kinase, CD117 mutants. Uh, and that's important because they're the only tumor that does it. You can separate them from other tumors. And that's also why you can treat them with Gleevec. Uh, the GIST tumors of a small bowel, up to 15% of all primary small bowel tumors. And we seem to be finding them more frequently. Location, duodenum the most common, then jejunum, then ileum. Um, it's interesting, every once in a while there are incidental findings when they're small, but most commonly the small lesions are picked up when patients present with GI bleeding. So again, intraluminal mass when small, exophytic growth, it's a great simulator of other tumors, and 3D can be very helpful. So this case was sent for pancreatic cancer, and maybe it could be a pancreatic mass, but there's no dilated ducts, it's so well defined then you begin to think maybe it's big nodes. If it's pancreas, then maybe it's a neuroendocrine tumor, but it's not vascular. Maybe it's off the duodenum. Maybe it's a duplication cyst. You look at it more carefully, it's a solid mass pushing on the portal vein and SMV, but not invading. And if you look hard on the arterial phase, you can see some increased vascularity. And this was a gist tumor of the duodenum, which simulated a pancreatic mass. Just a very nice example. And this article by K, primary duodenal gists are large, well-defined, heterogeneously enhancing, and hypervascular. And again, the growth pattern is very, very variable. The mixed tumor attenuation is the most strongly enhanced portion in arterial, okay? And then it washes out a bit. Again, these tumors can be somewhat difficult. This was a gist tumor rising near ampulla, but you can see why I consider carcinoid as a possibility. You can even see why I could think of a neuroendocrine tumor coming off the pancreatic head. Those are indeed all possibilities as well. And you'd have to consider, when you look at the images in the reconstruction views, it does seem like the duodenum is the epicenter for the lesion. You can see feeding vessels off the GDA. And again, you can say, well, how do I know it's not pancreatic coming off the pancreas? But I guess when you look at it more carefully, it really is primary duodenal. You could, however, think about carcinoid, not just gist. And here it is on the cinematic. You see the solid mass. You see it against the duodenum. You see where it's growing. And you see its exophytic nature. Now, that was medial. Sometimes they're lateral. Here's a nice vascular lesion coming off the duodenum. It's exophytic. You can see it very nicely on the patient's MIP imaging. You can see it very nicely on the MIP imaging. You can see it being fed by the GDA. And here it is again on coronal views. And again, vascular lesion, it's surely duodenum. You could think of carcinoid, but just might be more likely based on location. And again, that exophytic nature. Here it is when we go to cinematic, and it's very nicely shown there. Another patient, this one with neurofibromatosis. You see the duodenal gist tumor. It's coming off the duodenum. It's very exophytic. It's not causing obstruction. Again, GDA uh, flow. But again, a very exophytic tumor. There it is on the 3D, and very nicely showing the vascularity of the lesion. And another example of a duodenal gist tumor, again, you think of pancreas, you think of carcinoid, exophytic lesion, sharply marginated. Here it is on the MIP imaging, and here it is in the volume rendering and coronal display. So again, a very, very important differential diagnosis. Another example, here is a lesion in the jejunum. You can see at first glance it looks like it's intraluminal, but then you look more carefully and it grows exophytic. It is vascular, and the patient in fact presented with GI bleeding. You can see as you go from the various MIP imaging, shows the lesion nicely. And here you can see the mass with the feeding vessels and the exophytic nature of the tumor, which you can also show again, here it is straight on with cinematic rendering. It looks like it's almost intraluminal, but then you realize it is intraluminal, but also growing extraluminal, and that helps you reach the diagnosis of a gist tumor rather than carcinoid or metastasis or other lesions. 
But now you can see duodenal just tumors. You can see why they can be confused with adenocarcinoma, especially if you only have venous phase imaging, why occasional lymphoma or that exophytic component of it can be confused with lymphoma, and then pancreatic adenocarcinoma. Now, with just tumors, the importance of coronals and reconstructions cannot be highlighted enough. Here's one you see the circle showing you a one centimeter lesion off jejunum. And here you can see it much nicer as you do the 3D reconstructions. By comparing the contrast in the bowel lumen with the lesion, it's easier to see. And then as we develop AI, here's AI, or here's cinematic rendering, which hopefully we'll use AI to find that lesion as it stands out much better here as well. Now I mentioned when just tumors get larger, they don't typically obstruct, they don't typically present with GI bleeding, but you can see here there's a larger mass right lower quadrant, it's exophytic. What you can see also, it's very easy to confuse that with unopacified bowel loops, but there is the lesion and there's the vessels coming down, and here it is again, you see the mass, it's displacing bowel, but you know, the bowel is not all opacified, and you can see why you might think about unopacified bowel. When you look at the coronal display, it's much more obvious. You can see the mass, and when you look at the volume display, you can see it very nicely as well. Now, just tumors again, the exophytic component, here is one of the jejunum, which looks identical to what I would say is an adenocarcinoma. Here it is the infiltration of that case, again the encasement of the patients, duodenum and jejunum, the exophytic nature, the stranding, the vessel involvement, and the stretching of vessels and the neovascularity, very nicely shown in this example. You also look at the same case with cinematic, again this infiltration. Now, if you ask me the question, it's a little bit of a side question, where will cinematic fit in? I think cinematic, as you've seen from the cases I've shown you, gives a really good representation. It may be helpful in detecting tumors which are not well seen, particularly as you can accentuate the difference between tumor and normal bowel. We've used cinematic for this in the past, and now you can see why perhaps the cinematic rendering uh, will play a major role going forward. And you can see I've given you a bunch of different images really accentuating the tumor. One of the things we like to do is optimize the presets for specific tumors or specific applications to make everyone's job easier. In terms of large masses, look at this large exophytic lesion. Despite the size of this lesion, here it is coronal, it's not obstructing. You can say, well, could this be lymphoma? Could this be a mesenteric mass? Could this be a desmoid tumor? Those are all possibilities. Exophytic. And you notice when the lesions get large, they're not very vascular. This was a gist tumor. Now, I mentioned that gist tumors, when they get large, often aren't very vascular. Well, every rule has an exception. Look at this tumor. Look at the neovascularity present. That was a gist tumor. Look at it on coronal MIP imaging, the large mass, the extensive neovascularity. Look at it on the venous, where you can see it almost seems to be encapsulated. When I do the cinematic rendering, look at the large vessels. Now, we did the cinematic rendering for the surgeon who wanted to resect it, which he successfully did. But look at that neovascularity. Look at the hypertrophy of the vessels, the encasement the infiltration of the tumor now on the venous phase, and the extension on the arterial phase of the neovascularity. So the surgeon knew exactly what would be going on. It should be noted that with Gleevec, the tumors often become necrotic and the vascularity decreases, but this is just a really, really good example of just tumor. Another example, this one had GI bleeding. You can see the exophytic nature of the tumor. You can see here it looks intraluminal, but you can see in the prior scan it's exophytic. The MIP showed it to be very vascular, classic for a gist tumor. We did publish an article that made the point heterogeneous enhancement was associated with non-low risk of tumor progression. The association was expected as heterogeneity reflects necrosis and associated with increasing size. In neurofibromatosis 1, we can see gist tumors more commonly. Uh, 
in this article, um, this is discussed. Uh, Baker and et al. examined 61 cases of non-carcinoid gastrointestinal neoplasms in patients with neurofibromatosis. Uh, neoplasms are most commonly located in the small bowel, with neurofibromas being the most frequent diagnosis. So you can see there's a range of possibilities in that regard. Let me just comment a moment more on neurofibromatosis because it's one of the things, it's uncommon, but when you do see it, you should recognize it and also recognize that neurogenic tumors are indeed common. So an example, look at the skin, look at all of those neurofibromas. Then look at those multiple small bowel enhancing tumors. Those are multiple gist tumors in a patient with neurofibromatosis. Here's some more images, again, from the axial with the multiple vascular lesions. You can see if you didn't have a good injection, how impossible it would be to see those small bowel tumors, which are seen here as well with tumor necrosis, the patient's neovascularity, and just a beautiful example showing you the extensive involvement of the bowel, the multiple tumors present. And again, one of the hallmarks of these type of lesions is multiple lesions. So you got to be careful you don't have satisfaction of search and keep looking. And here is one more 3D showing you the skin as well as the patient's multiple masses. Very, very nicely shown there and there as well. Now with just tumors, I mentioned they can spread to liver or omentum. It is one of the tumors that gives cystic liver mets. As you can see here, the primary was in the left lower quadrant and it has some neovascularity. The GIST tumors often become necrotic after the patient is given Gleevec, so that's an important point. So we've now discussed in great detail adenocarcinoma, carcinoid tumors, and GIST tumors, which leaves us with one more primary tumor, which is small bowel lymphoma, and then other things including metastasis. But I see the sand running out of the clock, so let's take a five-minute break, and we'll come back and do part three of small bowel tumors. Thank you. If you liked what you heard here today, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and visit our website, ctss.com, for lectures, quizzes, pearls, and more. Also, be sure to check out our apps that are available for free on the Apple Store. All links are in the description box below.